this is one of those moments before the Senate where it matters if we read the bill. Because for all the posturing and for all the rhetorical political statements of where we want to be, it's important to recognize what the legislation says and where we're going to be. You just heard Senator Menar say, why do we preserve the special legislation and the special benefits that go to one school district? It's because it's already in the law that we're all criticizing and saying needs to be fixed. How do you reconcile that? It's picking and choosing what you like out of that existing law to shore up votes. Now, the problem of this is that there's a cost to it. We all know the fiscal challenges facing our state. We all know that there are school districts out there listening to this debate wondering, what is it that's going to be done for my school district? And we've got some nearly 900 of them around the state. And when you look at this legislation, if you look at all the special lines to it that the sponsor says he wanted to do away with, you listen to the sponsor talk about his criticism of the existing law, but then stand in debate and defend the pieces of it that are special that he wants to keep. You pull out your calculator and you start to add up the math of what it comes to. And it's stunning. The result of the legislation as it benefits one district seems to be some $700 million. We don't know for those districts who are out there wondering whether or not they'll be held harmless. We don't know whether the funding mechanism is going to be there to support them. But what we know is that if this law passes, one district wins to the tune of nearly $700 million. And I added up several of the components for you. The block grant, hundreds of millions of dollars written into the law that Senator Menard proposes that we adopt. Here's what's frustrating to me. There's been, in, in, in the sponsor talked about this, the years that have gone into this, and he's not alone in that. Many of us have strong desires to see the broken formula and funding system that exists be fixed. And that is a very technical and complicated conversation. It's one this body deserves to have. It's a conversation that isn't about line items of special interest to any one certain district. It's a conversation about the environment that we want our children to have when they're sitting in a classroom learning. The formula. Everyone says the formula is confusing. I don't understand the formula. The formula, the debate that we ought to be having, the debate I'd like to have with Senator Menar, is the debate about what that formula looks like. What are the categories? How do we weigh them? It's things like class sizes. Do class sizes matter? If so, what metrics ought we use for optimal environments for our kids to learn in those classes? Does technology matter? If so, how? What? How do we fund it? What about our gifted and talented students? How do we create a formula that enables and empowers school districts to have the resources available to teach their gifted students? Or what about those other students who may need more help? Now, Senator Menard's going to say, well, we've got our ideas on some of those categories that you may say are important. But they're the result of ideas that have been produced in a vacuum. They're the result of ideas that have been produced in a back room without the input of the other stakeholders to this. You know, who are those stakeholders? It's Republicans in this room, and some would like to characterize this debate as being nothing more than Republicans and Democrats, which is totally false. We all know that the biggest challenge that this bill faces is not in here, but is next door. 
In fact, today, Speaker Madigan is holding a hearing, which he's done for the many numerous proposals that exist for rewriting our funding formula. Today, we'll hear from the proponents of the evidence-based model, a model constructed with the input of the stakeholders to the educational system, not just the selected and chosen ones, but all those willing to participate together towards this common good. And so what's frustrating, when I say what's frustrating to me, is that we're not allowed to have the debate on those class size metrics and what's important and those technology metrics and what's important and the resources that we would like to enable for our gifted students or for those who need more help and support. Instead, what we're having today is a debate about line items in a bill that creates special favors for one school district. Why? I don't know why. The senator, the sponsor didn't answer the question of why those are there other than to say, it's already in the law that I'm trying to change. Well, evidently, we're not trying to change that law or that piece of the law because somebody likes it. That doesn't make it fair. It doesn't make it fair to all those students elsewhere. And this isn't downstate versus Chicago or suburbs versus Chicago. You know, I don't see anything in this legislation that writes in special legislation for those kids in Harvey or Calumet City, who arguably are suffering more than the kids in Chicago public school system today. Where's their line in the bill? I sure didn't see that one in the bill. This bill creates a windfall. It creates a windfall. It's been characterized as a bailout. We all know the financial pressures that face the Chicago public school system in the city of Chicago and the taxpayers that live there and the students who go to school there. And I'm one downstate Republican who says I'm willing to help on that, but it can't be a bailout. It can't be Chicago public schools getting $700 million from kids in every other district around this state. That's their money. They need a voice in this. They deserve a voice in this. Where's their voice? No one, no one disagrees that the formula that exists today is broken. We authored the report that preceded the bipartisan commission that studied it for a year. The report said the formula is broken. It pointed to the special deals that favored one district over all the other kids elsewhere. That's what the report said. And I heard the sponsor of the bill today say, that's the part of the bill I want, or the law I want to keep. The one part that we all agreed was broken. Now, myself, my colleagues on this side of the aisle, are sincere in our willingness and our desire to work with you. I've made that clear to you, Senator, privately, make it to you publicly, that I want to work with you to fix this. My problem here is this isn't it. This legislation takes a bad problem and makes it worse. And we all know what happens if this legislation becomes law the many voices that are clamoring out there today saying fix it get shut out because the legislature will say, well, we fixed it. This isn't the fix that millions of students around this entire state want and deserve. So again, I'm willing, Senator, to work with you I think that what you want to do is something that I want to do. I'm not convinced that this legislation is what you say you want to do. Now, if it is, let's pull just like you did with Amendment 3 that pulled out the special interest for one district. Let's start by Amendment 4 
removing the other pieces, and then having a real debate about the categories and the weights that deserve to be embedded to a formula so that we distribute these limited resources that we have authority over, taxpayers' dollars, so that we distribute them in a way that makes sense, puts those resources in the hands that need them the most, and enables them and empowers them to do what is necessary to educate our children and give to them the environment they deserve so they can learn here and compete out there in that world-class economy that we're supposed to prepare them for. I'm sincere in my interest in working with you on that, and I hope that wherever this goes, yourself and proponents of this bill will work with us on that. That I'd ask for a no vote on this uh, measure, Mr. President, and thank you for your time.